tell us in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button and share this video with everyone you know. See, it's a high responsibility. The power that you have as the president, as a leader, it's a very uh, tough decision. At the same time, you should have knowledge. You should have passion. Ang sinasabi nga nila eh. There are no certain qualification. What I mean to say is that you don't need a degree or something that uh, will lead you to run for presidency. It's very basic qualifications, okay? But on top of that, also, we should consider if this leader is qualified not just to run the, the whole archipelago, but of course, to have the passion and a heart. You know, connection we, to what you've said a while ago in electing the president. Now, we, um, Sir Jess and I prepared um, some uh, classification of the political leaders that you usually see in the political sphere or the political arena. Now, I want to mention or we want to mention about uh, three types of political mm -hmm. leaders such as the demagogues, the politician, and the statesman. Mm -hmm. So... While we go through the presidents, we, you will realize or you will classify these personalities according to what type of political leader they are. So when you say a demagogue, because when you say a demagogue, mm -hmm. it's a perverse version of the statesman. When you say perverse version, parang nabastos. Okay? Masamang version siya ng statesman because a demagogue is the, the one or a political leader who always appeals to the emotions of the masses or of its, con its con constituents. So, yun ang demagogue. So, parang kung titingnan mo, he's not acting rational. He's acting emotionally. So, that mm -hmm. is a demagogue. Now, when you... Um, move on to the po a politician. A politician kasi parang ito yung pinaka-neutral. So he's just running okay. for a certain position. So if, halimbawa, a politician wanted to be a president, now we can call him a politician already. Kasi he's vying or he's running for a position. So he just wants the position. Okay? But as we all know, position means power. So me medyo neutral pa siya sa part na yun. But the best form of a political leader mm -hmm. is a statesman. So when you talk about a statesman, he is someone who's skilled, experienced, and respectable political leader. What what's the meaning of this? In the simplest sense, masasabi natin na alam niya yung ginagawa nila. He has a good educational background and he he knows what he's doing. So I want to recognize Andres Bonifacio as the first president. It's for me, huh? my in my own opinion. Okay. Um, before I tell something about Emilio Aguinaldo, it's just they are very connected. You cannot um, remove the fact that Bonifacio started the revolution. He even organized Katipunan for mm -hmm. to install a revolutionary government. So for me, um, I think uh, Andres Bonifacio is the brain <clears throat> behind everything and how we got our independence. Because um, opinion starting... and on my own stand, same with me, um. um Chloe Palatino, that I recognize Bonifacio as the first president of the Republic of the Philippines. Kasi gusto ko bigyan siya ng credit. Dapat may, ay, ito yung ano yun, kasi si Bonifacio is street smarts kasi siya, unlike Emilio Aguinaldo. Street smarts si Bonifacio. So, as in, nagbuo siya, inayos niya ang uh, for um, the government kaya nagkaroon tayo ng uh, succeeding um iba uh, bra, um nagkaroon tayo ng mga reforms in terms of government so, siya ang nagsimula eh so, simula sa katipunan or KKK mm -hmm. so inayos niya yung mga uh, forms or um, forms of the government with that, uh, with that particular decade so Bonifacio talaga started the all so sinundan okay. lang siya ni email so, okay. very important to the revolutionaries because it revived the Philippine Revolution. Kasi malapit ng matalo ang Pilipinas. So, kaya siya sumikat because of his win in Imus. So, that's why sumikat siya as General mm -hmm. Miong, as the youngest general. And also, he is the youngest president of the Philippines at the age of 28. Because unlike in the 1987 Constitution, if I'm not mistaken, 40 years old dapat ang isang taong gustong maging presidente. But at that time, wala pa naman ganun na qualification. That's why he is the youngest president of the Philippines. So, 
Um, he is also the first um, okay. president of the Republic of the Philippines. And um, I, ni Emmanuel Alquezon during his term one, ito yung nagkaroon na ng uh, may nagkaroon ng karapatan ang mga kababaihan para bumoto. Ito yung okay. isa sa mga nagustuhan ko sa kanyang administration na, na binigyan niya ng karapatan bumoto ang mga kababaihan during the Commonwealth election. So ito yung a uh, girl power so, yung... as one of the best Supreme Court justices in the Philippines. Who, um, he... of oh. their own in order for them to survive. Kasi parang ang iisip si Goni, si Pelo rin, uh, wag naman spoon feeding na lahat manggagaling sa amin. So in order kasi uh, ang Pilipinas nagkakaroon ng problema in terms of poverty and hunger. So in order mm-hmm. for you kahit papaano mapapaano ma, ma, uh, malutas ang suliranin so nagkaroon ng magtanim para mabuhay in order for us in order for the Filipino during that time to to survive for the daily lives in, to survive binalik ito yung tiwala ng mga tao in terms of uh, good faith uh, faith and confidence of the people and the government kasi in the previous mm. lahat naman lahat lahat ng the past president before El Pidio Crino ay isa ito isa sa mga naging problema ito yung corruption so yung, mm-hmm. yung tiwala ng tao unti-unti nawawala so sa terms uh, sa, sa term ni El Pidio Crino gusto niya ibalik ang tiwala ng mga tao faith and confidence again in the government kasi parang pang corruption is rampant na rampant before his era or before his president oh. before his term so gusto niya ibalik ang tiwala ng mga tao sa mga sa gobyerno so gusto niya din magkaroon ng economic reconstruction But, ang background niya hindi siya mahirap mayaman siya the thing is magaling siyang makisama ang una nga niyang trabaho was he... na June 12, 1898 is the Philippine independence. So siya ang mm-hmm. uh, nag-proclaim that Marcos the Philippine independence... Okay. Let's put it that way. Doon na okay. lang ako magsisimula. Okay? It is good. Why? Because he built various infrastructures that we're still using. What are these various infrastructure? We have the Cultural Center of the Philippines, we have the Philipp- uh, the PICC, and we have the Coconut Palace. We have, um, ano pa ba? Um, Bataan Nuclear Power Plant. Nandun din yan. And the designer hospitals. Bakit tinawag na designer hospitals? Hindi ito luxurious hospitals. Ha? We, we call this designer hospitals because it is a collective brainchild of um, Imelda Marcos. Okay? Imel- Imelda Marcos was Um, the one who developed or designed that we should have a specialized hospitals. So, itong mga designer hospitals, designer hospitals na tinatawag ni Imelda Marcos are the following. We have the Philippine Heart Center, yung heart, uh, Philippine Heart Center natin, Lung Center of the Philippines, and the Kidney Institute of the Philippines. So, hanggang ngayon, ginagamit natin, aminin natin na talagang pinapakinabangan ng bawat Pilipino. Okay? Doon din nagsimula, na-mention ko na yung Bataan Nuclear Power Plant, that sana, kasi gusto nila maging self-sufficient tayo with regards to energy that was, that wa, that's the reason why they built it. And also, the Coconut Palace, okay? Kaya tinayo yun is, if I'm not mistaken, it's to house uh, Pope John Paul II. But John Pope John Paul II declined the offer. Okay? Because sobrang ganda kasi ng Coconut Palace. Okay? Um, ang, ang purpose na lang ngayon ng Coconut Palace is para maging office ng Vice President. But Robredo declined it. Mm-hmm. I, um, the last one who used the Coconut Palace was um, Jejo Marbinay. Because kahit sabihin natin oh, okay. that it is government-owned, hindi siya technically libre. 400,000 a month ang offer ng Coconut Palace. That's why Lenny chose to have a smaller office. Okay, so in terms of that, sa infrastructures, lalo na ang Maharlika National Highway, sa kanya yan, um, we can take credit for the Maharlika National Highway to um, uh, Marcos. Also, yung mga improvements ng land nut, uh, improvements ng roads sa kanya din yan. So, maraming infrastructures talaga si Marcos na ibinigay. But, uh, um, gusto ko lang sabihin, um, may nabasa kasi ako, eh, pag, eh, correct me if I'm wrong sa mga audience, uh, meron kasi isang scholar named, he's a UP scholar, Emmanuel De Jos. Um, lagi ko lang kasi itong nababasa and I 
feel na dapat i-address to na ang sinasabi kasi nila ang contribution daw ni Marcos is that ginawang you know, one is to one ang dollar noon it means ang dollar oo it means equal lang yung value but in a sense hindi siya ganon na one is to one mababa lang yung palitan parang nag-start siya nung panahon ni Marcos is one is to 12 pesos but never one is to one Okay? So, i-correct lang natin yung common misconception na yon. Okay? But the economy was doing good in the first years of Marcos. But if you will ask me on the second term, um, the economy was deter- deteriorating. That is the right term. The economy was already deteriorating. Why? Basically because sa mga nababasa ko... Yung tawag siya the mother of Philippine democracy. First, the, the first female president... For women. Okay? So... doon na uh, um, na highlight or explain or na expound yung rights ng mga babae kaya meron na tayong ano yung mga um, pagbuntes pwedeng mag-leave ang babae tapos dinugtungan pa yon ng pati yung asawa pwedeng mag-leave para dun sa pag-aalaga ng bata so doon nagsimula yung um, rights of women na talagang napahalagahan also Meron din tayong tinatawag na amnesty. Still um, pampal ang ala, um, um, ang corruption kasi kahit kahit ititrace mo lang sa nasimulang mga presidente until now hindi walang hindi nawawala ang ang corruption or walang uh, negative uh, lahat may negative sa lahat sa kanila so wala pa lang dito masabi walang perfect president for um walang perfect president sa mga tao. But for me, um, in terms of economic, kumanda ang economic ng bansa but, uh, during the term of uh, Binigno Aquino kasi tuma, uh, dito papasok yung PPP. Ito yung private, uh, uh, public-private partnership. Ito yung unti-unting kumanda ang mga infrastruktura. Doon natin masasabi kung totoong nag-fail or hindi. Okay. Thank you. Now, sir, just this is for you. Question that, uh, yes, the current administration somehow is still working into something right now. But we still, ako personally, I have still, kahit paano, no, I have hope that somehow this administration can help, no, what's the problem economically and by health in, in, in the situation of pandemic. And now, my last question. Stay tuned for the next episode only here on Big Media.